questions, we'll start with Phil Perry, followed by Jim McBride. Hey, Josh, how's it going? Good, Phil. How are you doing? Good, thanks. I, I, um, I wanted to ask about something that, uh, that Matt said on the radio this week, which was he was a little disappointed, I guess, because he, he let the Texans touch the football a little too often for his liking. Um, where do you stand in terms of your assessment of, of how Mac is weighing risk versus reward in terms of the throws that he's, that he's willing to try in game? Generally uh, he's been very, he's been good about that. Uh, but I, I think he, what he said is accurate in terms of room for improvement because the goal certainly is that they don't touch it ever. And so until we are doing that on a week to week basis, I don't think, um, I don't think really that, you know, our goal will, would be met, which is don't give them any chances to have their hands on the ball. So um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad he feels that way. Um, and again, there was a few chances that they had in the game to do that. Look, there's going to be a chance or two, maybe on a down the field play, where our guy has to go up and make a play for the ball. Their guy might have a chance to touch the ball. Those are going to happen uh, periodically through the course of the year. The ones that we, we want to avoid are the ones where they have a chance to touch the ball and our guy really doesn't have an opportunity to do so. So um, just goes back to uh, being disciplined, reading the coverage on every play, um, and then making a, a smart decision if something isn't – if the play itself doesn't have somebody available – um, you know, to our liking, then just make a smart decision. Let's live to play another day. You know, very, very rarely are we going to say we lost the game because we threw an incomplete pass in the second quarter. And so just, just, just doing a good job of being disciplined and making good decisions. Are you more okay with, with a little bit more aggressiveness when you're in a situation like in that game where you guys were behind and, mm -hmm. you know, the score dictates playing a certain way? Does, yeah. Does that, does that allow you to be okay with those moments, I guess? I think being aggressive and making uh, making poor decisions are not are not the same thing, though. You know what I mean? And so I think you can do both. You can be aggressive and you can give your players a chance. He gave Hunter a chance on the flag route on the touchdown, you know, and had to get it over top of somebody's hand. You know, that's being aggressive and, and, and giving your guy a chance. Um, you know, there's uh, there's other examples, I'm sure, where, you know, we, we, we could have made maybe a better decision here or there. So. Uh, we just want to try to be as aggressive as we can be uh, to try to score, but also uh, be smart in those situations. If there's really nothing there and you just, you just really, the, the percentages are not nearly in your favor, then you just got to do the right thing and protect the team. Got it. Thanks, Josh. Yep. Next question, Jim McBride, followed by Bob Sosi. Hi, Josh. Hey, Jim. Hey, I wanted to ask you about uh, Brandon Bolden and just, you know, how valuable his leadership is and his locker room presence and kind of more specifically that that run he had on Sunday, that 24 yard run and how he was able to, to find that cutback line. Yeah, Brandon's uh, Brandon's been a great teammate ever since we've we've had him here. I was fortunate to be here when we brought him here. Um, I've seen him grow and develop uh, mature. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of things that that. Uh, happen over the course of your career that, um, that that impact you and Brandon you know he played early as a rookie uh, on offense he played in, in the kicking game he's been an unselfish teammate for his whole career uh, certainly values his role in special teams is always ready to go offensively on any down uh, or any situation that we use him in uh, and has been productive in all those roles so I have a deep respect for Brandon and appreciation for the kind of person he is and, and the kind of teammate he is. And uh, Sunday was no different, you know, throw him in there, uh, ready to go on third down, caught a couple balls, then made a big run there, you know, towards the end. I think Brandon's always had good vision and good speed. And, um, you know, he got around the, the, the crack block and then he did a good job of trying to set up the tackles block and then found the, the little cutback there before he kind of burst into the secondary. So, um, have a lot of confidence in Brandon uh, on offense. Uh, I know he, he he's a he's a really important piece of our special teams as well. So um, couldn't say enough good things about Brandon Bolden. Thanks, Josh. Next question, Bob Sosi, followed by Mike Tiardi. Thanks, Asa. Good morning, Josh. Good, good morning, Bob. 
Okay. Uh, question regarding your, your, your statement about uh, aggressiveness and making good decisions, and you, you use the line, if there's really nothing there, you do the right thing and protect the team. And I'm, I'm curious, when the balance between when you're trailing by multiple scores between being safe in scoring range and not making a mistake that costs you an opportunity to get points, but also the urgency with time, uh, what, what factors into your mind when you're play calling in those spots? Are you counting possessions, assuming your defense is going to stop them there on out? I mean, what, what are you thinking, uh, you know, as that game goes along and you pull within a couple of scores, a field goal and a touchdown, for example? Yeah. Um, I think each game is different. Um, I think you kind of got to have a, a feel for uh, your team, first of all, and how uh, you're playing offensively um, and have an opportunity to understand the momentum in the game and, and what you need to do to keep it uh, if you have it. Um, you know, and uh, just there's times where you where you can count a possession or two, you know, out. Uh, but uh, like, you know, in, in, in Sunday's game, there was quite a few possessions that took a number of minutes off the clock. So it's kind of hard to uh, always be accurate in that regard. Um, but I, I mean, when you're down, when you're down more than one score, my, my overall philosophy, unless it's, you know, the last couple minutes of the game has kind of always been, you know, we need to, we need to be productive with this possession. You know, we can't worry about the next possession, what comes after this one, how many more we're going to get. You know, there's no way to score 10 points on one drive. We know that. And so try to keep, you know, as poised as you can, um, you know, try to make a one good call after another as, as best you can and, and give ourselves a chance to score. So um, I don't always do that, you know, the right way. And hopefully I learn from my mistakes if I make them and, and try to do better the next time. But um, I think trying to stay calm and in the moment and, be as productive as you can with each series that you have the ball in those situations is more important than trying to be frantic and hurry and, you know, and then make mistakes and, and not, not be as productive as you wanted to be. Thank you. Uh, next question, Mike Giardi, followed by Nick O'Malley. Afternoon, Josh. Hey, Mike. I was wondering, you know, kind of going back to the beginning of this conversation about, about Max saying he let them touch the ball too much. When he has some throws like that, does that change how you call a game? Like, hey, we got to dial it back a little bit to, to sort of maybe get his feet back under him? Or are you still, hey, you're here, you're good enough, we're going to keep doing what we do, just do it better? Yeah, I ha no, I do not lose confidence in him. Um, I think he's demonstrated already, you know, in a short time that, you know, he's, he's uh, able uh, to do the things we're asking him to do. And uh, he's generally protected the ball. He's generally found the open player and thrown him the ball accurately and given us a chance to move the ball in the passing game. So, um, again, I, I just go back to any young player, you just try to use those as teachable moments. Um, sometimes he probably wishes I didn't have ability to communicate to him in his helmet, um, you know, because I can actually do it at, on the spot. You know, I don't have to wait for him to come over to the sideline. Um, but that's just part of being a quarterback and learning from those experiences and, and, you know, just being able to say, Hey, you know, if it's not there, just, you know, be smart, you know, we're not going to lose on an incomplete pass here. So, um, you know, he, he's learning from each one of the, the, he learns by series, honestly. I mean, it's, it's really a, a fun, uh, opportunity to go through this experience with a young player. It's been this way my whole career. I've, I've really enjoyed coaching the, the young guys because, they're sponges and they they are going to make a mistake here and there. It's impossible to believe that they're going to go into a game and play 60 minutes and never never do anything that needs corrected. So, um, you know, you just take those opportunities to try to teach them. And, and, and at the same time, he knows that I'm not going to lose my confidence in him. You know, we're, we're, it's the National Football League. He's the starting quarterback. We got to try to win the game and I believe in him. I trust him. I trust our entire offense. And, you know, we just got to go back out there and make the right play the next time. So um, I, like I said, I, I think he learns from each one of those opportunities and mistakes and uh, he's done a good job of trying not to make it a second time. And we'll continue to press on that. Do you have to, uh, you were with Tom for so long, you guys would have some back and forth, right? There'd be some yelling back and forth. 
-hmm. do you have to sort of gauge where he is, how he feels in, in regard to your response to him? Like, because I'm sure there's sometimes be like, what do you, what do you, you know, don't do that, yeah. you know, but do you have to? Yeah, I think you got to have a, you got to have an understanding of, of who you're speaking to, you know, I mean, every player is not the same and each player may need a little something different from you. Um, and so I, for the most part, I'm trying to, I'm trying to just teach with him. Um, you know, I mean, emotion is, <laughs> Emotion doesn't do us much good in the middle of the game like that one way or the other. Um, not to say that the players can't be emotional when they make a good play or whatever. That's fine. I just talk about, you know, we're trying to coach them and correct them, you know, as best I can, which I don't always succeed at that. You just try to keep the emotion out of it and get the point to them so that if it comes up in a game again, that, that we do the right thing. So, um, yeah, it just, you know, each guy's different. Each man's different. Tom was different. Max different. You know, Hoyer's different. You know, Stidham, Jimmy. I mean, I've had a lot of them. So um, they they need a certain type of communication. The most important thing is that our communication is understood and that the point that we're trying to make, uh, that they understand it and they go out there and do it the next time. Thanks, Josh. Yep. Next question, Nick O'Malley, followed by Andrew Callahan. Uh, hi, Josh. I want to ask about the uh, offensive line situation on Sunday. Have you been in any situation where you've had such a significant turnover in terms of starters playing one week and then go, switching to almost all backups the next week? And how much of an adjustment do you need to make offensively knowing that your uh, number of players are um, uh, going from backup to starter and even a guy like Yodney getting his first NFL snaps? Yeah, yeah. Um... I don't believe I was ever in a game that was um, that had that big of a swing. Um, it's pretty, it's, you know, it's just an interesting uh, opportunity that we were presented with. Um, I thought that the, the players really responded very well to it. I mean, look, these guys are all NFL football players and they have a lot of pride in themselves and they work really hard to do the best they can at their job. So I had no doubt in my mind they were going to, go out there and, and give us everything they had and play with great effort. And, and they did. Um, but again, I think I've said this many times, you know, we have a bucket every week and our buckets filled with the players that we have an opportunity to play with and that are going to be active, that are healthy. And we have to choose a scheme to fit those players based on the opponent that we're playing. And so if that means we have to do more of something one week and less of something the next week, then that's what we have to do. If we have to be, you know, throw the ball quick one week and protect it up the next week or run it more from this grouping or that grouping, um, those are the choices that we try to make uh, based on uh, educated decisions we're, we're going through day after day here during the course of the week. And so I thought the players really responded well last week to what we tried to ask them to do. Um, and then, you know, to go out there and run the ball for 130 yards and, you know, give up one sack and, um, you know, generally move the ball forward most of the day. I thought that they responded very well and I was proud of their performance. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, probably two last questions here. Andrew Callahan and Tom Curran. Hey, Josh, it's good to see you. Um, hey, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask, I know you guys talk a lot about being a game plan operation week to week and then over the course of the season, you kind of learn what you're, you're best at and more or less roll with that in different ways. How close do you think you are through five weeks to learning, you know, the things that you're best at here with as an offense? Getting closer. Um, you know, I, there's definitely some things that I think we repeat now and, and we feel pretty good in terms of our comfort level um, at this point. Um, I think, I think there's still some, um, some growing together uh, as we work together with one another. And I mean, what I mean by that is, you know, Mac throwing with Kendrick Bourne, Mac throwing with Nelly, Mac understanding the differences between Hunter and John who, you know, now Brandon Bolden's in there a little bit more on third down than James White. What used to be, you know, there's still some growth there. I see, I, think, I see the same things up front, you know, the tight ends blocking with the tackles last week, it was a couple of different tackles and normal. So I think just the, the, the ability to work in combination with some of the other players, that we are working with in the passing game, running game, up front, what have you. I think that's continue, that will continue to be a little bit of a work in progress. But, um, you know, schematically, I think we're trying to 
you know, settle in on some things that we feel like we know how to do. Um, and, and there is always going to be an element each week of something that maybe we don't do it a lot, but we're going to do it this week more. Uh, certainly that happened in Houston and I'm sure it'll happen again this week against a really good defense in Dallas. So, um, I feel better about where we're at. Um, I think by six to eight weeks, you kind of know, you know, where you're at and what you want to, and really more than anything else, what you want to stop trying to get good at, you know, cause that's really where you can waste your time during the season as a coach is, you know, you really, you went into the season with this mindset, like, I really want to be good at this. I really want to be good at this. You know, and then you look at yourself, you know, six, eight weeks in, and you're like, we're no good at this. You know, and at that point, as a coach, it's time to cut bait and just say, listen, we're good at other things. And we tried it. We tried for three months to, to really make this go. And, you know, for whatever reason, it could be a number of reasons. It's not very productive. So it's time to move forward and, and let the players do the things that they do best. And um, and I think, like I said, I think we're getting closer to that. Along those lines of just doing things different, you mentioned Houston, obviously, you know, using Janu, Hunter, and even Ramondre there for snaps is kind of a lead blocker. Like, it's how much just it, – it doesn't seem, at least in my opinion, that the expectation of seeing Janu and Hunter on this, the field together has happened as frequently as we want. Do you feel like there's a lot more to unlock there or at least still figure out in that – a lot with your – when you're in 12 personnel, basically? Yeah, I think I think, again, I think with those two guys – we're asking them to, to do a lot of different things. And some of it, some of it has been more, I would say, circumstance in the game, uh, Andrew, relative to, you know, if, if you're behind and you're going to have to throw the ball, then, you know, we might be more in 11 personnel than 12 personnel in those situations. So I think starting the game uh, better, which is, is going to be a big focal point as we go forward, you know, if we can start better and get ahead and get the lead and play from ahead in those situations, you generally then have more choices as to what you want to be in as opposed to what you have to be in. So um, I definitely think there's more to, to those two guys being on the field together. There's no question about it in all situations uh, that we're looking forward to trying to develop. Um, and, and again, hopefully we can gain control of the games. And at that point, then it's kind of dealer's choice, what you want to use as opposed to, you know, we got to be in our 11 personnel grouping because we're more in a throwing mode or what have you. Thanks, Josh. Yep. And last question we've been over here, uh, Tom. No yeah, I'll keep it tight. <clears throat> Thank you so much for all the time you're spending. But <clears throat> I'm sure when you watch a football game, there's times where you look and you go, what are they doing? What are they, why are they doing that? And I think that occurs sometimes, always with an offensive coordinator, regardless of the game you're watching. You guys got in the third quarter down to, where the hell was it? Uh, oh, down to the Houston 36. Um, you went Damian Harris for three yards, Damian Harris up the middle for minus three. And then I think it was a screen outside on third and 10 from the 36 mm -hmm. to, uh, to Bolden and, and he got three and, and he kicked yeah. a field goal, 52 yards. And I think that's one of those times where people, what does he do? Why, why did he do that? Why are we running the ball there? Um, can you just give a insight into, because you're a smart guy, why that would be? Yeah. Um, I, I would just say this, I, I, ne I would never call something that I didn't have confidence or faith in that could be the right call. Um, and, and I have also never had a game where I've had every call be right either. And so uh, I'm human. I know that for a fact. Um, I make just as many mistakes as anybody else does. And um, the intent is always right. And because I want us to be able to, to, to do the things we're calling well. Um, and I, I always will take responsibility for the execution if it's not good. That's my job. So, um, you know, there was mo there was that series and then there was another series, too, that I wasn't super proud of either, um, where we get down there and just, you know, kind of stumble around and, and don't have enough positive plays to continue to move it and get it in. So, um, you know, I, I, I always look back on those things and, and try to figure out how I could have made it a difference there. Um, certainly those three plays that you're referring to were not our three best plays of the day. And, um, and I have to do better. And that's what I'm going to focus on trying to do. Um, and again, give our guys the best chance to be successful in those plays. But I understand if, if it, look, I get it from my wife. So it's, you know, the frustration is I understand it. Um, I, I, I just hope I, I never am going to try to call a play that I feel like doesn't have a good chance to be successful. Um, we were trying to be balanced in the game on Sunday for sure not try to get too far away from, you know, running the football 
um, based on our situation and circumstances and um, try to do that as we went through four quarters. And I thought that eventually helped us. Uh, it certainly didn't help us there in that series, though. Truly appreciate it. Thank you, buddy. You got it, Tom. Thank hey, you very much. Just before I get off, I want to say congratulations to all the Red Sox. That was awesome. Really, really enjoyed watching the ending of the game last night.